Hey guys, what's going on? Sadiq. Welcome to Experiences with Sadiq. Experiences with Sadiq is about all things real estate. A show where communication is key, advocating for the people's bliss, and knowledge is inspiring. Thank you for watching. Enjoy the show. And oh yeah, don't forget to follow me on all my social media platforms. Whether you're buying or selling the home, I'm that guy. Let's go! Today I have a great person in the house. His name is Josh Wa. Choppy, actually, Joshua, Joshua Choppy. I'm just playing around, guys. Uh, this guy is a young fella. Um, he's doing this thing right now in the real estate market. Joshua, what's going on, my man? Not much, brother. We've just been grinding, <laughs> grinding all summer long, bro. I see. All summer, man. I see. We've I been see. hustling. We've been busy. We've been just having a good time, trying to help as many realtors in the area as we can, and That's what's up. just having a blast while we do it. You know. Listen, dude. Josh, you're killing it right right now in the game. Like you're young. Matter of fact, you go ahead and you talk to the people and we got introduce to the people who you are and what you do. My name is Joshua Choppy. I am the founder of Choppy Media, filmmaker and photographer. Um, I focus with a lot of real estate media. Um, we do a lot of um, interior, exterior photos for realtors, builders, interior designers, you name it, we do it. Um, and uh, we're looking forward to just continue to serve the state of Rhode Island, Massachusetts, and Connecticut, and just continue to do a great job and uh, help our realtors sell more houses. So it's crazy because Josh, <laughs> I, 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 the first time I met Josh, actually not met, but the first time I saw Josh was on Facebook, mm -hmm. right? And I'm just, I'm, he, I guess he had one, but you had a video up. And you're just talking, just mm -hmm. a, a live, a I live video. I know you do that <laughs> all the time. Something I like to do. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> now, and it's a great way to actually expose yourself. For sure. And so I'm like, who, who is this kid? Mind you, like Facebook, your news feed, you just see everything. So just see this one young kid talking, talking about what he does and stuff like that. I'm like. Who is this? Who's, who's this new kid who's a photographer in the game and stuff like that? And lo and below, it's your man Joshua. The man, he, he's young, he's driven. He's, uh, he, ha he has a lot of things going on for himself. Uh, I'm really, really proud about the moves that he's taken and the, or, or he's making in the game like this. If you don't mind, Josh, like, mm -hmm. talk to the people in regards to how you actually came about and started this whole... How I started the journey. On, yeah, the journey. The, exactly, the Let's journey. Let's see. The so it started way back when, but um, I've always grown up, my family, my dad always had a camera in his hand, whether it was photos or videos for like special holidays or like my sister and I taking Christmas pictures together. Um, he always had, you know, he's the camera always there so that yeah i mean i i think that kind of rubbed off a little bit on me but fast forward a little bit more to like 2014 i started on youtube i did some youtube video stuff and i realized i was like you know what like this is like like i want to do like creative stuff mm. for a living whether it's yeah. videos photos you name it i feel like i have a good eye and i could help people out people started pulling me aside from just doing youtube videos and actually doing like real projects for like businesses or uh just different creative projects where i could you know practice my skill set and then i ended up going to school in uh at the end of 2018 at new england tech for uh, digital media production which was more focused geared towards video production but they also had uh, music radio you name it and then i was like you know what like i really really like this stuff so i want to try and do like the freelancing gig um, one of my friends was in real estate photography. I saw that he was like working with like five real estate clients and I was like, oh my God, like five real estate clients. Like, I want that. Like, how does that work? Like, I want to like run my own business and why not? And I was like, you know what? Like I want to work for clients. I want to work for people. I, I think, I think it'd be really cool to go into houses and like take some nice photos for some realtors because like they, they need nice marketing material. And then it just kind of spiraled off from there where I kind of started very slow in November 2019 was when I first, when I shot my first real estate, you know, project. Yeah. But before then, you know, I was hustling. I was trying to get my first listing. 
you know, it's kind of difficult to get your first project going when you don't have anything to show for yeah. it. And so um, going going on Facebook, trying to get that first one was mm -hmm. a struggle. But once I got that first one, I just kind of kept spiraling off from there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, slowly but surely, we just kind of built it up to doing so many listings a week now. But, you know, it started with one and that one house that I did, yeah. I thought it was like fantastic. I was like, oh my God, <laughs> this house, client loved it. Yeah. Client loved it. They, they, they can't tell the difference like I would, mm -hmm. but if I were to take what I did less than a year ago and compare yeah. it to what I do now, like, oh my God, so much stuff I, has changed and so many different things that I do differently mm -hmm. to make, you know, it's not about taking the photo. Mm -hmm. It's technically like you're making a picture, like you're making something that's like you're selling you're selling and so when you sell you really want to make the the product like really top quality uh maybe uh sell that lifestyle like that that whole vibe that like you know like this is like a luxury home or like mm. this is like can you see your dog running in the backyard so mm. each picture kind of tells a story so it's, so think now instead of just snapping the picture yeah you're more like making that photo because you want people to envision themselves there. You know, you don't want stuff in the photos. You don't want this there. And so you want every photo to tell a story and inspire people to be like, yeah, I want to go check that one, that place out. That's, it's, it's really interesting that you s say something like that. But how do you actually bring that out, though? Like, How do you bring it yeah, out? Yeah, like, because right. it, as a photographer mm -hmm. or... Anybody, yeah. As a, in your case, as a right. photographer, you have to you have to have an eye for certain things, right? Mm -hmm. So I guess, yeah. How do you go about bringing that artistic attribute a out, artistic and so people right. can see it and they believe it, and they just like, wow, I can see myself living there, like this and that. So there's a few strategies that my business we go about with. Um, there's a few little tricks that I love to add mm. to my real estate photos that I don't see many others do yeah. and that, that I think sets us apart from the others. One of them is that we like to do this thing called um, virtual staging. Mm. So if you take a, a vacant listing or maybe even not a vacant listing, but a listing that's like in complete disrepair, the owner doesn't have enough time to clean it, you could declutter a photo and then you could pop in fresh furniture kind of like you know, this living room here, like, it looks really good. It's staged really You're nicely. You're bamboozling the, the people. <laughs> <laughs> I like to mess with people's heads. And so you put fake furniture yeah. in. And then people could be like, they could see themselves. Yeah. They could see, oh, I could see myself here. Because before on a vacant house, you yeah. can't really see much. You just cool. see walls and the floor. Mm -hmm. But when you add some furniture in there, then... You know, it, it kind of helps bring that idea like, oh, like this is a living room or, yeah. oh, we could put a pool table down here or, oh, like the kids would have so much fun yeah. playing in the playroom. So like all these different pieces of technology that we utilize to um, really just kind of capture that target audience and be like, oh, I could see my kid uh, watching TV on that couch or that or um, another example would be like we also do. We also light fireplaces. Oh. So if you have a fireplace, so you can show you just light the fireplace, that's crazy. but you don't light it mm -hmm. on site. You light it after in editing. And so, like, just giving that sense of like coziness mm -hmm. and warmth, it really just shows like it makes the place a home. Yeah. You know, and then other things that are very technical. It's really just all about like the angle yeah. of the rooms that you take. You want. You want to capture the angles in a nice, nice flattering way. You want to make sure that you could see the space. I mean, if there's a lot of light, you want to capture that there's big windows or yeah. a skylight or um, who knows? Like there's so many different methods that yeah. kind of go on that like I could explain to you for many, many days, <laughs> like so long. Like I could explain like yeah. the things that go on in my head when I spend like an hour at a listing, but all these little strategies and you know, uh, tricks that I do mm -hmm. that really just, you know, make, make it so that people see a listing and then they're like, you know what, let's go check this one out because this one in Warwick, Rhode Island looks so much better than that one in Warwick, Rhode Island, mm -hmm. because that person used cell phone pictures and this person used a professional and this one tells a story and this one, 
like it may be the same price, mm. but this one is the one I want to go see. You know, you know what's crazy. So, <laughs> shout out to my to my uh, uh, videographer Jesse uh, the Def If you guys don't know Jesse, Jesse does a lot of my uh, uh, video stuff. Mm -hmm. Like the man, the man's a monster behind the camera. So I I pretty much understand what you're talking about, right? And the reason why I bring Jesse's name up is because Jesse and I we talk about things of what you're saying, right? Mm -hmm. In terms of how you could go about and bringing things forward. Right. You know, to 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 light and of course. people see it based on quality versus a, an, an item that does like for instance if I was to do a if I was to do a video on a on a listing, right? Right. Jesse's like, "City, we have to do this on a professional level." There are some people who shoot properties using their cell phone. Of course. But the quality's different, it's right? It's just different. You it's, can tell the you difference. You can tell the difference. You can tell. Exactly. Not everybody can. Yeah. But the ones that have the eye for it yeah. can definitely tell yeah. when like one something was shot on a phone. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong, guys that are watching at home. There's nothing Phones wrong with a cell great. phone. Cell Trust. phone pictures are <laughs> an iPhone takes really good photos. It does. There's nothing wrong. We're not saying that but there's anything wrong with it. It's the technician mm -hmm. that's behind the camera utilizing the settings yeah. and the different features that the full frame mirrorless camera or DSLR mm -hmm. camera provides that'll take the detail that an iPhone might not grab. Mm. And the technician that went that has the education and the experience in the field actually creating the content mm. over the over somebody that's meant mm. to be selling houses, like your specialty is to sell real estate. Yeah. Your specialty is to help your clients buy and sell. And so your job isn't to worry about the photo and video stuff. Your photo and video stuff should be taken care of for you. You shouldn't have to worry about oh, I got to take pictures today. Like, you have somebody for that, or you have somebody to do the video for you. And, and so. it, it, it's not, it's, I don't think it's inexpensive. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of realtors find it, they think that's expensive, right? But not realizing, like, if they do their due diligence, mm -hmm. they could, they could, and they find someone who could do decent work, mm -hmm. they'll realize that it's inexpensive. And over the course of time, as you're it working, pays off it pays themselves. off. And then over the course of time, their brand gets built. The brand gets built. The individuals that's doing the video or the uh, photo shoot, like the quality of work they put out there, over time, it, it, it gets just... way better because they understand what you're looking for. Right. Right. And when I see you take photos, I'm like, wow. I'm like, because you work with somebody amazing. for the first time, and like say, like you had like specific, like requests yeah. or like you were like hey josh like i want my photos to look different than what you've been doing yeah. but like i kind of want to have some oversight so that like we could stand out apart mm -hmm. then like usually the first listing is a good feeler for that yeah. and be like hey like uh instead of uh doing this angle for a kitchen i want like a close-up shot of like the vase on the kitchen table mm -hmm. or stuff that like i don't do for everyone and so each, every time I work with somebody for the first time, it's always a good gauge to feel for like, oh, so this is how so-and-so style is, and this is the style moving forward that this person wants. Nope. And so as you go, yeah, like every listing, like I kind of, I shoot them pretty much the same way. Yeah. Like I, there's nothing that really changes mm -hmm. between shooting a listing for you and shooting a listing for somebody else. But like the expect, I can, I know the expectations are there and I know that you you have you like the quality that I produce, and so I'm going to continue to bring you that quality that you produce. But if there that I produce, but if there was something different that you were looking for, then like to like stand out from the rest, then I now that I, I would know for next time, and I'd be able to implement that mm -hmm. on future projects in different houses because every house is a different opportunity to try something different and look at different angles and different pictures and just really capture. Capturing that moment. Yeah, exactly. And there's different styles that people like and different things that people do to tell, to be like, oh, that's a Sadiq listing yeah. or instead of like somebody else. Yeah. So yeah, like every first time working with somebody, it's great to get an idea of what they're going for mm -hmm. to really build off of that. And then like when you work with somebody now for like, when you work with someone for like 10 times, you know, like mm -hmm. instantly, like there's no like, 
oversight or anything like, hey, Josh, like, make sure you get this picture. It's like, oh, he's got this covered. Like, he knows what I want. He knows how I like it. Yeah. Like, everything is like, it's a relationship. It, it, a relationship with the photographer. It's 100%. That's 100% what it is. When, when you have people that can work alongside you and they understand your brand image, understand how you want to be represented, mm -hmm. the individuals that you hire can actually create, could create that. You know, they could create that brand image for you right. if you allow them to, if you give them the creative space they need, you know, to be able to, like yourself, do, do the things that you need to do. Absolutely. Um, not, not too long, when we first started having, this, uh, having a discussion, you mentioned how you use uh, Facebook to leverage your career. Absolutely. Right? How strong do you feel... If social media wasn't around, mm -hmm. right, and you had to do this, right, how strong do you feel like doing this, doing this, and trying to go out and get uh, get business? Uh, how strong do you think it will be? Do you think it will it will have catapult help you catapult your business the same way Facebook did, or do you think like with Facebook being around or social media being around? It basically helped you out major. So Facebook is where I've got pretty much every single one of the clients that yeah. I work with today. Um, it's a very strong platform. One of, one of the things that is different from like if, if Facebook wasn't around is that I can continuously post to update clients that I currently have and then potential clients that I'm friends with on Facebook to just share with them like, hey, I'm shooting a house in East Greenwich today or hey, I'm shooting a house here. They know who I'm with, they know I'm on the move and they know that I'm working. And so um, Facebook is great because you could post, there's not a limit to how many posts you can post a day, but there's a limit and there's not a limit to how many people that you could potentially reach in a day. But when you're trying to reach people Without Facebook, like say Facebook was non-existent, exactly. you'd have to do a lot of door knocking and you could only get to say five places in one day maybe mm -hmm. to try and get these people or you can only reach so many people on your phone a day before you get tired of talking on the phone. Right. But you could type enough of stuff on Facebook to really promote yourself, you can do your Facebook lives, mm -hmm. you can do all sorts of content creation to yeah. really just grab people's attention and be like, hey guys, like my name's Josh, like sit with me and we're gonna talk about real estate photos. Here's five things that you need to look for when working with a real estate photographer. Or here's things that you need to get rid of in a picture that's gonna help sell the house faster and different mm. things like that. And so uh, Facebook is a great tool. Uh, you're top of mind when you're using Facebook and uh, you could post unlimited amounts of and times. No, you're 100% right because I use social media as my way of uh, catapulting catapult my career. So uh, a lot of people, a lot of people or realtors don't understand the importance of uh, social media. Mm -hmm. And I do, I'm a millennial, you're the next generation right underneath me. Right on. So social media technology is basically our thing. Mm -hmm. It's basically our way of life uh, mm -hmm. per se. Right you know? um, and so I use social media as effective as possible Absolutely. to build my book of business as well. Uh, Josh, what, have, what changes have you made to adapt, into, to adapt in the new current norm? And in regards to how did you pivot? Of course. Um, so I started, like, you know how like the norm was way different a year ago, like today, because you six know, months ago was different. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> but so I kind of started when, like, you know, if this wasn't an issue, and like I had like a couple months where like I wasn't super busy, but I was still shooting, and like everything was all good. Mm. And then it happened, yeah. <laughs> and happened? when it happened, COVID happened. Yes. <laughs> we love. I I try and use it as less as possible yeah. but when that occurred my not to like sound like too like oh like covid helped me but mm. like covid actually like brought my business up it seems because a lot of people weren't helping realtors in that mm. time a lot of them went down mm. but i was um willing to you know make sure that i maintained you know the standards that were set by the government mm. to continue to work with 
realtors in the area. So, you know, mask up, glove up, sanitize up, social mm. distance up, all that good stuff. Um, some changes that I made. So, like I said, I'm still pretty fresh into the game, but there were some pro products that people were looking for that I did not offer mm. when I got started. All right. And so... Without those products. So, the two products that I brought to the table because of COVID would be the Matterport 3D floor plan. I'm not right. sure if you're familiar with yes, how those look, but those were just huge that, because they use those as virtual showings. Yep. Um, and then the uh, other one was a 2D floor plan, which was also another key component to bring people the listing mm -hmm. without actually having to see to see it yeah. firsthand. Yep, yep. They just trust their realtor. Yeah. Maybe there is ser more serious. Mm -hmm. It weeds out the serious people exactly. from the non-serious people because exactly. they see like, oh, I don't like that layout. I'm not gonna go check it out. Yeah. So it's wastes everybody. It doesn't it doesn't waste people's time and it keeps people safe from uh, actually having to see people and like in person. Mm -hmm. And so um, those were the two things that I brought up because of what occurred. And I mean, what's still going on is, I mean, it's not like it's past tense. It's still a thing. But um, yeah, uh, that's kind of how I pivoted my business to uh, help clients continue to serve their sellers and buyers. Yeah. Well, you know, their sellers on the selling side, you know, getting the Matterports done or getting the 2D floor plan done. And then their buyers on the buying side buyers get to see the Matterports and the 2D floor plans that are completed. And I mean, it saves everyone's time because I mean, I mean, if they don't like the Matterport, they don't like how the house looks or how it's laid out, then it's just one less house that they're going to waste people's time on going to see. No, and so, too. and then they keep everybody else safe. And so Nothing they maintain true. that social distancing and keep it. Yeah. Like I said, it all comes down to staying safe and healthy. So it really seemed like you, you saw the opportunity. Right, yeah. because in, 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 in the new, before the new norm mm -hmm. right, uh, occurred, right, mm -hmm. we, people didn't really know how to pivot. Everybody was trying to figure out how to pivot in this Absolute. industry. You know, even every time I was doing so, I was trying to figure out ways to pivot. Of Jesse course. and I would talk, uh, we need to try to do this, do this, do that. So, like, by you seeing what's going on in the industry and you realizing what people need, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, so they could continue doing their business. You looked at it as, it seemed like you looked at it as an opportunity more so than a failure to take advantage of the moment. Right. And I mean, I don't want to like sound like I'm like taking advantage of it in like mm -hmm. a bad way. Like, because no, I know a, a lot way. of people had, a bad way. I know a lot of people had difficulties yeah. during this of time, yeah. but listening to my clients and their needs yeah. being like, Hey Josh, I want you to do Matterports. Mm -hmm. Hey Josh, I want you to do 2D floor plans. Mm -hmm. Like those different services you know like i was able to bring them to the table and my clients were very appreciative of that yeah. and um you know just making sure that they could take the proper pr proper steps for their clients to to serve their clients best and mm -hmm. yeah you're right i did i did take advantage of the opportunity i did utilize i took advantage of the opportunity to uh bring new bring new services to the table mm -hmm. you know still maintain the safety and all that good stuff while i was out during the, you know, the peak, I would say, of this crisis that we're in now. or I don't know if you even call it a crisis, but, you know, <laughs> the, during the peak, during the peak of this pandemic. And, yeah, um, yeah that's pretty much it. No, that's, that's pretty cool. <laughs> uh, what does it take to be a real estate photographer? And what advice will you give to those looking to get into a real estate photographer industry? Um, I think it takes more than just knowing how to use a camera. Right. Um, it takes Take it a, it takes, a, it takes a, it takes a, it takes a good, <laughs> it takes a, it takes a people person. Um, you're working with a lot of people that are very busy. And so to be able to go and, uh, you know, have a positive outlook on their day first off and like, just, you know, be like, Hey, like, how are we doing? Like, I'm excited to help you out today and good stuff like that. Um, it takes someone that's really excited about what they do. It takes somebody that's really good at customer service and customer expectation, as well as a good focus on quality control. Um, like I said, I mean, I said it doesn't take 
more, it takes more than just the camera. Um, it takes somebody that's willing to put in long hours. <laughs> this is a business that you're in where you may just be the real estate photographer and you're not selling houses firsthand, but in the busiest months and the busiest of season, like I said, I haven't been doing this for very long, under a year, but this summer, holy smokes. How many, tell them how many So business, many hours. Tell, tell them how, many, how, how much business you drew in this summer alone and how many hours you just I would work. say <laughs> in the past, I would say, so I kept track of it. For the month of July, we did 65 houses. And then for the month of August, we did... 75, 80 houses, something like that. I forgot the number off the top of my head. But this summer alone, we did about pretty much close to a couple hundred houses, I would oh say. Oh, gosh. By the end of September. So the goal for the whole year, yeah. when I first got into this not knowing yeah. what, would ha what would have occurred, my goal was to do 150. For the year? For the whole year. So you basically All 12 surpassed months. Past that and in two months during the summertime. Right. <laughs> so I will just say I reevaluated my goal. <laughs> nah, I'm a very goal oriented guy. Nah, so nah, it's nah, fun. No, nah, that's that's good. And it's crazy because like you really put the time, you really put the effort and really uh pushing yourself and uh making sure that you're out there so you can pick up these businesses and obviously to grow. Where do where do you see chopping media? And do you, where do you see Choppy Media? And is Choppy Media here for the long run? Choppy Media is strapped in <laughs> for many years to come as far as right now goes. Yeah. I don't see anything coming up yeah. in the near future that's like going to pull me away from doing this. I'll be here in the summertime. I'll be here in the wintertime. Um, I eventually look to expand on my team and just to continue to provide a good quality product for people. Um, yeah, Chubby Media is gonna be gonna strap in. We're trying to get into the luxury market. It's very hard to get into the it luxury is. market. I'm trying I mean, to talk even as that. a photographer, <laughs> even as a photographer. Yeah. But um, eventually, you know, as we continue to put the pieces together and yeah. provide a quality product for everyone, yeah. I provide the same product that I will provide for somebody that sells a $200,000 house compared to somebody that's gonna sell a million dollar house. So everybody's gonna get the same quality service, the same Joshua, the same everything. And so, um, yeah, that's like the, that's one of the big goals for 2021. Mm. More luxury stuff, more builder stuff, corporate stuff. Mm. And so um, that's kind of looking forward for the new year. Not that, I mean, we're in September right now, but Still, you know, it's good to think. We're in quarter four, so yeah. to think more long term. Chavi Media is here for a long time. Nice. You guys hear it from your man, Josh. He's doing this thing. Josh, how old are you? 20. Dude, the kid's 20 years old. <laughs> <laughs> I love the telling people my age. <laughs> I love telling nah, people my age. Nah, it's crazy because, right, a lot of people don't really, th for instance, right, so a lot of young kids mm -hmm. who finished high school, right? A lot of them think they might need to go to college to grab a degree and start something. Right. In all actuality, you really don't need to go. I don't want to say college is a bad thing, but if you see an outlet, an opportunity, mm -hmm. an industry that you can tap into without having to go to college, right? Tap into it. And real, a lot of these young kids that's coming out of high school and that's decide that they don't want to go to college, but they want to look maybe for a trade. Real estate is that industry. Right. You guys hear it from the man Josh. The kid's 20 years old. He's done over 200 homes already in just two months, that like July <laughs> and August. And mind you, his year, his, his year goal was 150 homes. He surpassed that in two months. So there's like there's opportunity. You just have to know how to chase those opportunities. Josh, my man, tell the people how to find you, how to reach out to you. If they want to do business with you, how can how can they make that happen? You could find me on uh, Facebook. I'm always active on there. It's at, always. <laughs> <laughs> always. Always active on Facebook. You could always personally reach out. 401-426-7853 uh, is my cell. Or you can send me an email at joshuachopy at 
gmail.com. I'll talk to you guys soon. And you guys know what it is. your man Sadiq with Communications, key advocating for the people's bliss and knowledge. It's inspiring. You guys can catch me on all my social media platforms on Facebook and uh, Instagram, Experiences with Sadiq. If you're looking to buy a home or sell a home, contact me on Facebook, Sell with Sadiq, on Instagram, Sadiq Davies. Catch you guys soon. Love ya. Hey. That was freaking uh. awesome. <laughs>